Hi everyone, the Lazy Fire here. Welcome back to Battlefield 4 multiplayer. I have Pythonicus with me today, and we're on a different map. We're on Paracel Storm. Want to say hi, Pythonicus? Hello, everybody. Yes, I brought him back. I I think we're gonna be bringing back a lot of uh, previous guests to watch me play this. Okay, to better than normal in the future. So you get to be the first, though. Ooh. How's that feel? I'm I'm honored. Also, oh, yeah, apparently slightly in a better mood than the last time I was here. Uh, last time you were here, you had to watch me play single player, so this is <laughs> automatic better mood. I so, guess so. Uh, yeah, well, I'd, <laughs> I can't imagine it getting worse than having to watch single player in this game. <laughs> um, imagine how I feel playing it. You actually, uh, you bought this game after we uh, we did a video. I did. Uh, I actually went out and bought myself a PS4 and decided I was done with Call of Duty forever. And, uh, yeah, I decided I'd try the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. Well, now that you're on the autism spectrum and have a battlefield, <laughs> uh, <laughs> how does that feel? Oh, man, it feels a hell of a lot different. I am having a hell of a time adjusting to all the changes, like, especially the vehicles. Like, what you're doing in the jet right now, I've tried. It is not that easy. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm actually playing this with a controller, and I have it custom mapped, to, so I feel kind of good about myself. Um, it does look pretty simple when I'm doing this, but it's I. This is the exact setup I use for Battlefield Three. Goodbye. Nice. Uh, <laughs> it's the setup I love to use for Battlefield Four. It's pretty great. I will still crash this thing into a rock eventually, <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> and if you look at the top left, someone asked if they just got killed by Bill Cosby. Uh, <laughs> We all, everyone on my team uh, is basically a goon, and we all have emblems that look like Bill Cosby. Nice. So every time we kill somebody, they get a big, big Bill Cosby emblem. <laughs> That's uh, beautiful. So this is Paracel Storm. Have you played on Paracel? I have. It was actually one of the first maps I played. I believe the second. So it's it's it actually stands out in my mind as one of the better ones because just how early in the game I played it. Mm. Yeah, I. Uh, I was actually on one of the islands when the uh, Levolution happened. Mm. Like, right in front of the damn thing. I'm surprised I didn't actually get crushed by the, the boat. Oh, you can, too. That's the <laughs> that's the fun part. No, I saw that happen I, right in front of me. I, was, I saw the dust cloud p pop up, and I'm like, oh, crap, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. It, it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, it? This level does get kind of nuts, and I've shown it off in a couple different videos that like the the storm comes in and the ship can crash into an island and everything it's actually really cool and they're going to have uh, there's premium content coming up in, in about a week from this recording uh, called naval strike and it's going to be nothing but maps like this basically they've released what those look like and they look a lot like this yeah I actually took a look in the in the games thread and I saw the uh, post regarding that they look really good they look interesting yeah. Yeah, I, I really like this map too, I have to be honest. The one thing I really love is that it has a point for the people who don't want to play, and that's the E point. Uh, it's out on the middle of the ocean here, look how far away it is from all the other points, and it spawns a, a little bird helicopter, like the one I'm shooting at right here, mm. and, no wait, yeah, that's a little bird, and that, uh, it gives people a reason to be out there, everything, all that good stuff. Uh, but for the most part, it really serves no purpose. Uh, mm. Because if you have a team that has B, they have a mobile AA gun. So why would you even worry about the, having the little bird if you have something that counters it hard? Uh, the other points are kind of cool. D has that little building there. It looks over to E. And, of course, C is a uh, pretty similar setup to D, but that's where the boat comes in during the Levolution. Yeah. Uh, a and B have pretty good access to some decent buildings. And of course, over near A, you can see a radar dome over there. Next time we make a pass, uh, that is a popular sniper perch. So, oh, but of course. Uh, but this is one of the easier maps because it's uh, carrier-based. Both teams spawn on carriers to uh, spawn trap people on. Hmm. And we actually, I I need to go see if I deleted the video by mistake. Uh, but uh, some goons and I ended up pulling a 700 point victory out oh. on this map. Oh no. Uh, just last week. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it was really bad. Uh, right there it looks like that guy had active protection on so he blocked those rockets but you can see, or missiles, 
Um, you can see how dominating this A-10 can be on this map, but we're not actually here to talk about the A-10, believe it or not. Oh, man. Well, I do spend a significant amount of time in it, <laughs> but uh, we actually... This is about the boats in the game, and there are... Uh, I, I don't know if you've kind of noticed this, but there are kind of three fronts to the game. There's water, there's land, and there's air. And uh, the boats are kind of a new addition to the Battlefield series. They've been in it before, uh, like Zodiacs and like jet skis and stuff. Right. But in this game, these fast attack craft or battle boats or murder boats, as they're all uh, colloquially known, are a really big part of uh, a lot of these maps. And they're really fun to use, too. Yeah, I uh, more than often I'm spawning infantry, and god, murder boats really suck. What are like, you using to fight the murder boats? You see, I'm I'm still in that COD mindset, so usually I'll just spawn in with an assault uh, kit. Oh, yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, no, I, I don't have a good time. <laughs> occasionally, I'll, occasionally I'll spawn recon just so I can see if I can get any uh, cheap shots off on the, on the gunners or anything. Mm. It, do, it usually doesn't end up working out too well, either. Yeah, the gunners are kind of the weak point of the boat. Those, uh, the machine guns they have on there are extremely good, uh, but those guys get taken out with no issue. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, getting on a boat in the gunner seat is a little dangerous. And here I try to shake this guy by, like, diving off into the water, uh, but he is a fucking lock-on guy, and so he's not even going to try shooting at me unless he can get a lock-on. <laughs> and so all I have to do is get a, into a turn battle with him, and I can win this. He'll he'll give up eventually and just fly away. <laughs> so so I noticed once you got like really close to the water, your camera started shaking forever. Was that is that a feature or? Uh, what happened there when I got close to the water was that uh, I was actually in uh, damaged or I was in out of control mode. I guess uh, it, it's like this is the trying to think of what it's called, like the disabled system mm. in this game. Uh, if you take too much damage at once or get hit with a stinger or other rocket launcher while you're flying a jet or a helicopter, uh, you'll go into disabled mode. And I have gyro stabilizer on for my attack boat, so that means that I'm basically going to be able to kind of control it kind of okay. Right. Uh, but in some situations, you're not going to be able to really handle it, and you'll just crash into the water. So I was in a dangerous spot there, to be honest. Uh, I fly a little bit too low, a little bit too often is the problem, and uh, I get myself into a lot of trouble because of that. Yeah, I, I, uh, it, it hasn't been on this map, but I've tried, like I said, flying the jets before, and uh, I think it was, um, it was the railway, where, Gold. where, I, yeah, Goma, where I was, where I was flying around, and I was trying to find targets, except I slammed into a mountain. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. It, it's. Flying a jet uh, and flying a helicopter, too, they're a little bit difficult because you have to handle your aiming and your flying in a pretty complex machine all at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't really um, I don't really worry too much if someone's kind of new to it and they're having issues. It's the people who are like level 50 or level 60 who are crashing immediately that are kind of the problem <laughs> in a lot of maps. Uh, and I've uh, there's a, like maybe two videos later, uh, in the night I recorded this, I was on a uh, this map called Dawnbreaker that we haven't really seen yet, and I kept getting into vehicles and crashing them. I could not fly to save my life. Uh -huh. It was really bad. I was surprised how bad it was. Uh, but that's kind of the nature of flying in Battlefield. Sometimes in some maps you'll just be great, and then sometimes you're just going to be like, I'm going to crash this thing into a building four times in a row. Take that, everyone else on my team. Uh, but this was actually a better one for me. Uh, I flew around a lot. I got to shoot down some people. It's all good times. Hmm. Yeah. And I didn't crash into anybody in particular. <laughs> which is, like, jet ramming has become a bit of a problem now because uh, people, as they've like played this game and gotten better, some people have just decided, like, I'm not very good at this game. I'm going to take out the other jet the only way I know how, ramming straight into them. I've only done that once accidentally. Completely accidentally. I've uh, done it a couple times, once accidentally, and one time I was trying to do something called Marioing, uh, which is where you get slightly above the other person, and then when you've got the belly of your plane basically over top of them, you slam down into them, <laughs> and you can force the 
Goodbye. <laughs> that thing's gone. Nice. That's kind of a mean thing. That was a three-person kill because someone spawned into it as it was crashing, I think. <laughs> uh, I've done that before, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. spawned into a chopper that was out of control uh, yeah, somehow, yeah. and like I couldn't jump out in time before it slammed into the side of a building or something. Yeah, oh god, it's it, it can be bad. Uh, you have to really watch the, the little screen on your bottom left when you die. It'll give you a pretty good idea what's happening, but sometimes it doesn't always tell you everything. Yeah. Uh, because I've definitely had situations where I'm like, oh, I'm pretty good, and I spawn on somebody who just gets nailed by a tank because they were looking away from the tank that wasn't wasn't shooting at them at the time, so they were okay. Right. Like, uh, yeah. But, you know, that's... Every game is going to be like that. It's it's got the uh, the spawn system in the game is a little bit better than what you get in a Call of Duty game. Oh well, yeah. Uh, simply because you have your spawn points and everything, you don't really have a lot of people spawning right on top of you or right behind you. It still happens, but it just doesn't happen as much. That and you can actually control the general area in which you spawn instead of just being plopped down somewhere where you have access to. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that was always a fun thing in Call of Duty. Um, Oddly enough, I got back into I got into Titanfall. So oh, now. Titanfall! I could yeah. talk, I could actually talk about Titanfall all day, but that's not this game. So no, no. <laughs> It'd be good if you could keep your mind on this game, <laughs> uh, just for now at least. For now. For now. Uh, but the really fun thing about this map, I think, is that it is a good map for people who are learning to fly, to really learn to fly. Yeah. If it, you want to look at it that way. Yeah, there doesn't Here's seem to be the, very many uh, vertical obstructions. Yeah, that radar dish there that I've mentioned before, that's kind of your biggest one. Uh, like, the big problem with attack jets, like I've said before in the attack jet video, is that when you go to use the uh, missiles, or the, the lock-on laser-guided missiles, or laser-guided bombs, uh, they, like you have to look down at a 45-degree angle and kind of understand, like, you're going to miss obstructions that are coming right at you. So, yeah. yeah, there's... In this map, you don't really have to worry too much about it. There's, you know, the... Uh, the wind turbines and everything. That's about it. I'm looking at that chat right now. I don't know what the hell's going on, but it looks funny. Yeah, this was a weird chat. Um, <laughs> it was either this chat or a different one where some guy was just like, I don't know if he was high as shit or English was like his third <laughs> language, uh, but he asked something like, how does begin rain? And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Uh, like the chat in this game, that's it's uh, it's kind of a well. Uh, and one of the things about this server is that it has a script running, so it will tell you when someone goes on a spree, or when someone ends a spree, or something like that. Right. Which I can't decide if I love I love that or I hate it. Mm. Now here's a, a fun thing you can do with uh, the lock-ons is you can lock onto something else and then move on to the next target, and as long as you get a laser to contact on it up to the last second possible, uh, you'll get a hit. Oh. You'll be able to hit it. So you could actually spoof somebody with a countermeasure by targeting like a jeep nearby or something and then moving to the last second before they can really react. Yeah, that's pretty slick. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really uh, avail itself to you very much, but I pulled it off there, which isn't bad. Yeah, one of the... Uh, big things about this map, though, is controlling that B point, because it does give you that anti-air gun. And you can, the anti-air gun, believe it or not, is actually amphibious, so you can take it back to your spawn had you need to do such a thing, and it's got enough range where it can work like that. Wow. Oof. Dangerous stuff right there. Yeah, I, I would have... I, I seen about 15 points where I would have just, you know, slammed into the ground. But in, yeah. in the course of this whole thing, most, mostly because of my own ineptitude, but also because, for oh, some reason, I find well, the arc controls... Watch this. Don't feel so bad now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I ended my nine kill streak by suicide. Chrono Jam is at 34 kills. The guy is a machine. He, oh. uh, I played with him a couple times now, and he is just... Every game is that ridiculous with him. But you yeah. can see right now we have three boats... That is a crazy number of boats. That's actually uh, the maximum one team's really going to have at any one time, uh, because unless the other team abandons one of theirs. Because by taking A, you make yourself, uh, or you get yourself a boat that you can spawn into, and you get two at start. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, right here, this is kind of a pro technique, but you can repair boats from inside the boat. Right. Uh, you can do this with little birds too, but uh, with battle boats, it's a little more difficult because you only have a very small area you can do this in. Uh, on top of it, it doesn't really repair as fast as the helicopter used to do. You can see here, I'm repairing for a long time and not really doing much. Mm -hmm. It actually builds up a little bit of momentum after time. Mm -hmm. Now, you can actually switch seats enough in the battle boat where you can take that jet ski I'm looking at right there and uh, drive off on it. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's one of those things that you wouldn't really know unless you uh, had been told, I guess. So right now, people have abandoned this boat like crazy because we're getting <laughs> pounded by another boat. I don't realize this, and I keep repairing, and people keep spawning on the boat. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening. Uh, so, yeah, we're getting just nailed here. Uh, we're getting hit by AC-130. We're getting hit by a plane. Helicopters are shooting at us. We're in a bad spot. And as you can see, a lot of my teammates are just falling off of that fucking gun. Uh, those, I'm sure you know, but those guns are really the weak point of the boat in mm -hmm. terms of areas to aim at because people just get knocked right off of those things. Yeah. But I want you to look at how fast I'm getting points here. Mm -hmm. Like, just sitting on this boat is getting me a lot of points. Yeah, you <sighs> Someday I'm going to hit that shot. Someday. I don't know when. It's not going to be today, uh, believe it or not, in this video that I hit that shot, but... Someday I'm going to hit a shot from a moving boat on a moving helicopter. <laughs> I, I think. Now one of the cool things, I don't know if you've uh, seen this in your playtime with the game yet, but they actually added a, uh, a new aspect to naval combat, which is you can knock boats back into the water now. Oh, I actually haven't seen that. Yes, if you uh, <clears throat> beach your boat, you can get out and hit it with your knife until it goes back in the water. Nice. It, it, in my experience, that takes so oh, about 500 swings. <laughs> Somewhere in that realm. I gotta put that video together, too. So, sounds uh, about normal for uh, real life purposes. Yeah. So, I, uh, people on the other team are now attempting to jihad jet ski. <laughs> uh, they got that desperate. And right now, this, uh, see what the, uh, the thing over the boat faces? He's been actually named the high value target for the enemy team. Wow. So that means that everyone knows exactly where this boat is at any given time. <laughs> now the fun thing with battle boats is that the most common uh, weapon to fight against vehicles with for engineers is generally going to be the MBT law. And the law, as you probably know, Pythonicus, only does five points of damage per shot on a battle boat. <laughs> I actually didn't know. I, like I said, I spend most of my time in an assault kit, so I don't get to play around with too many rocket launchers or anything. I mean, the times yeah. I do, I, I, I do occasionally switch to engineer, but it's not all that often, unfortunately. This is actually one of the better maps, I think, for assault class, because uh, they can basically avoid all the vehicles, save for the helicopters, uh, by staying on the interior islands. Uh, oops, there we go. <laughs> That's the end of that battle boat. It lasted but, forever, though, so... Yeah, that guy, I kept him alive for a while. Uh, it's important that we see, like, the engineer riding in a boat is actually kind of an important factor in this game. But, yeah, as you can see here, we're fighting over B uh, a little bit. I'm going to actually spawn in on our friend. Oh, no, wait, I took the boat out, that's right. There's <laughs> there's a point where I do actually end up on foot for a little while, don't worry. <laughs> uh, but here's the evolution, or one of the evolutions on this map, is this storm that comes rolling in. This is actually one of my favorite ones in the game because it's uh, it's really interesting in terms of what it what it does and how it works. Uh, first off, the the storm will toss your boats around and everything, and of course the enemy boats. But the waves are all server side, which means that everyone is seeing the same wave at the same time. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, yeah, and so that means that like I'm not going to get knocked out by somebody else who has a different wave on their side of things. Uh, they also provide basically mobile cover, so you can use the waves to basically keep yourself from getting shot. Mm -hmm. uh, right there, you're seeing, I'm using the 30mm cannon on the boat. That's the, well, I was. Uh, <laughs> I got slammed. So, yeah, uh, this guy's not a Nazi, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the boat is, uh, it's got a few different weapons to it. One is the 20mm the cannon it starts off with. 
moves onto the 30 millimeter, and then of course it has the very infamous now because uh, <laughs> it doesn't have any drop anymore. Uh, the the burst cannon, which is basically uh, the developers have said that's the anti-air weapon of the the game for boats. Mm. So you know where to use it. And it's actually pretty fantastic, but you run out of ammo so fast that I really prefer the 30 millimeter cannon. Um, of course, the boats have a lot of different setups to them, uh, so you've probably seen like smoke and stuff like that. Uh, so they can use smoke uh, smoke as a countermeasure. They have active protection. They have extinguishers. They've got pretty much everything you could want in a tank or a helicopter. They're kind of a nice mix of the two, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, things they have available to them. But this is also the longest we're going to see me in a little bird for a while, uh, the scout helicopter. Right. Because I basically went a little too far into enemy territory here. <laughs> uh, so I'm getting locked from the carrier and by their planes and everything. And I don't... That's actually their other their scout chopper there. I have the 25 millimeters on this, so does he. And those things do heavy damage to uh, choppers. Right. So I go down pretty quick because I'm not very smart. <laughs> uh, so yeah. You can see that the battle boats are actually a huge part of this map and a couple others, uh, especially with regards to things like the, uh, the the heavy water maps like this and Land King Dam, and uh, of course uh, we've seen Hainan Resort where they can be super useful. Mm -hmm. And this is the gunner seat on the attack boat. It is one of my favorite things to do is just sit in this gunner seat, mark targets, and just take down helicopters and planes. It doesn't do a ton of damage to those other vehicles, but it can really ruin their day. Right. Uh, you know, basically death by a thousand cuts. Mm -hmm. It's got really great range. You can see here, I'm actually looking basically behind us and to the left. Yeah. And I can look, I can look uh, forwards and to the right almost. You can shoot through this boat like it's not there. So <laughs> there's there's such a great range of motion on these uh, these guns that you're always useful in some capacity. It's yeah, like I said, these are really some of my favorite things to use in this game. Yeah. It, it, it's better than most of my gunning experience when I'm in a chopper, say, because yeah. most of the time, you know, you got your express elevators, and uh, they're not interested in letting you see where you're going or what you're trying to shoot at, so... Uh, so Dr. Strangelove here has taken us into enemy territory to try to get this guy. Uh, this guy here, I think what's happening with him, uh, the guy who hasn't left his spawn there, is he's doing, uh, he's using one of the secondary weapons on the boat, the TV missile, mm. and he's firing that thing. What it does is it basically, uh, look at this, both of the guns hitting this guy. Uh, but yeah, what it does is it fires off a missile that you can actually control. Uh, it basically puts you in the, the driver's seat of the missile. Mm. And you can, it doesn't have uh, any sort of limited range as far as I can tell, so it can go like straight across the map if it has to. And it does pretty damned good damage. So by the time he's prior, probably fired both of them off, he is probably full on the next round of them. Right. And I've got to... Like, there's some videos I have that I've had forever and then I've got to go edit it. And one of them is what happened when we ran across a guy on our team doing that and we blocked him with the other boat and, like, forced him out of uh, his spot until he actually moved. Because, like, that that's really not helping anyone on any team because you're going to get a hit maybe 30-40% of the time at most if they're anywhere near you because the TV missile is very difficult to control. Mm. The smarter move is to use the tow. Yeah. So, basically the, the TV missile, from what, I'm he from what I'm understanding, is basically a predator missile that comes from down low and is incredibly difficult to aim. Oh. Yeah, that would be a good way to describe it, I think. Uh, if you want to think of it like in Call of Duty terms, definitely. It's basically the Predator missile from Modern Warfare 2, uh, but it comes out at the level you're on, and uh, it turns like shit. Oh, lovely. That's, that's probably exactly it. So, I actually do rack up quite a few kills in this boat, believe it or not. There's plenty of time left in the match, look at the score. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Yeah, it, it takes a little while to get going sometime in these boats. What really is the danger in a boat in this game is the fact that right at the start, there's a really good chance you're going to get completely fucked by the other team's boat. 
Mm. Because pretty much uh, what should be your priority on this map is the rush to A. If you're not rushing... Oh, boy. We're going to get hurt here. I'm trying to kill this plane. I can't quite see him, though. Uh, but in the map, if you're... Uh, and here we go. My The driver has abandoned us. <laughs> Uh, so we're trying to like clear off some of these guys that are out in the woods here. But at the start of the map, you can go and rush over to the A point and basically get your team an extra boat. And it's really important to do it. But because sometimes your other battle boat will decide that it's way easier for them to go over to E and get the team an, an, uh, an extra scout chopper, you'll end up in a bad spot. All right, here we go. The guy who was driving this, I can't remember if he said take the wheel or if he just gave up. But if you keep getting out of the fucking gunner seat in this thing, I'm going to take it. Yeah. I usually do wait or ask questions, but if you're not talking to me either, uh, I'm just going to take it. There's no good reason to have your boat beached like this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, as we, f we finally get to see me drive the boat, I'm not the best boat pilot, but there are people who are amazing at these things. Uh, like, oof, that was good. That was nice. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty nice. I don't even know how I hit that. That's that's one of those shots, like, when you get a S Rock kill or something like that, that you're just like, there's no way I should have hit that. What the fuck's wrong with me? Uh, but the boats have a pretty good setup in terms of weaponry. Think of them like a, a faster, waterbound LAV, kind of. Mm. Uh, you can get them around a lot pretty quickly. There's, of course, the boost mode with it that just decreases your uh, ability to drive. You can look at 360 degrees from the gunner seat, and they do amazing amounts of damage, but with the 30 millimeter, at least, I think they don't... Uh, th there's not really as much splash damage, so you're going to have spots where you're, like, you're going to have to hit infantry straight on sometimes yeah. to do any damage, which means you have to get really familiar with the drop and everything of the weapons. So right here, we have all of our guys in this one boat. Uh, <laughs> not exactly a bad situation to be in. It means I've got an engineer repairing me, and I've got... Or uh, I could if Ziffles is an engineer. Right. But it means I have two gunners to point people out to me and to gun people down if I need them to. So this is really ideal, but you're also basically a points pinata. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are always nice when you get, like... You're aiming for the vehicle, but you get like four, th three, or four kills in the same uh, instant. Oh yeah, I love that. That's the best part of the game sometimes. There we go. That guy uh, decided his boat needed to go into the <laughs> air. Uh, you can actually launch your boats and jet skis pretty far if you want to in this game, but that guy just missed the the hit there he needed to launch it. Mm. But here's C now. C has this giant boat beached out here. And if you hold the C point, there are automatic uh, anti-air guns on top of it mm. that will uh, that boat that will become yours, and they'll shoot at anything that's uh, in the air, which is really nice to have. Yeah. So if you have the C point, you're really better off uh, triggering the levolution there and getting that uh, to kind of work in your favor. And that's one of the big uh, factors in why you want to have C, even though there's no vehicles spawning there or anything like that. Yeah. Um, this. Yeah. So, any other questions you may have about all this stuff? Uh, for the most part, I understand m m more or less most of it, besides just general mechanics and uh, and me being a cod nerd. Yeah, it, it's a difficult transition to make. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, you're basically gonna look at it going like what the fuck am I doing why is this so slow where are all the people why am I not dying 40 times in three seconds <laughs> you know there's some questions there I think you have to answer to yourself um, but one of the really fun parts of this is just learning all the different things I mean some people are oh I hit C here by mistake and I ended <laughs> up in a third person luckily this guy doesn't have active protection yeah. and I have an engineer swimming towards him <laughs> well, didn't even need to worry about it. Um, but yeah, like, getting used to a lot of the stuff in this game is going to take a while for someone who's played Call of Duty. You know, when I made the transition to Battlefield 3, uh, even with the lower player count in that game, it still felt like a like a pretty big game overall. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Of course, I was playing that on the Xbox 360, so it was like a 24-person maximum per map, and you still had a lot of people just all over the place. Uh, in this, with 64 players, holy shit, like, there are times where you can't turn around without getting hit by, like, 50 people. Yeah, what's even more fun is when you get a team full of snipers, and they can't hit a damn thing. You mean they're snipers? <laughs> hey, now, I'm not that bad. I, I pride I, myself on my video game sniping sometimes. Even if I'm it's terrible. not <laughs> founded or warranted. I'm terrible at it. I've got a really, uh, I have a video from, oh, man, like, week three of release, where there's some guy on my team who goes, uh, one in 26. Oh my god. On, uh, one of the DLC maps. Just, he sits <laughs> at the very edge of the map, and what was happening was, somebody had picked up on the fact that he wasn't moving, and just kept driving a dirt bike out there and running him over or throwing C4 on him and killing him. Like, he got ki like He was... He just never picked up on the fact that he was dying because he was bad at the game. <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. Oh, no. I'm thankful that I'm not, like, that, but sometimes it is pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sniping is... It's, uh, it's a risk and reward because you can kill guys with one shot sometimes... Uh, but most of the time you will not. Right. So, uh, one of the things I should mention, you might have seen it a couple seconds ago, there were, uh, mines out in the water, and you can actually drop slams and AT mines into the water in this game, and do a pretty good amount of damage with them. I'm just getting nailed here. I luckily have an engineer in the other seat. Hmm. And this is kind of where the, uh, the strategy of driving a boat comes in is, like, look at the how the water, and I'm going to use the water and waves to kind of avoid this guy and give myself some time to heal up. Right. And get him when he can't hit me as well. And then just ram him like it's fucking Assassin's Creed. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do. Ram somebody in a boat in Assassin's Creed 4. I still haven't played. I, I stopped playing after Bro. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I stopped playing after Assassin's Creed 2, and then I came back to 4 because it was like $20 for a weekend. Wow. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's a good price for Assassin's Creed 4. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to like it that much, but yeah, sure. And I liked it. Uh, but yeah, actually, this this whole map reminds me of Assassin's Creed 4 at this point. <laughs> uh, it's just a bunch of like half-destroyed buildings. I'm pretty sure if I activate Eagle Vision, things will look really cool. Uh, but yeah, the... This map is really one of my favorites in a lot of ways, uh, mostly because it's got this really neat layout to it. Uh, there's, it makes for really good firefights on the interior islands, and then on the edges you get all these uh, vehicle fights. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really nice mix of what makes Battlefield Battlefield. Uh, of course, these buildings here can collapse on themselves, and I've died in that collapse more than once. But, you know, let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> oh and no, there was one point where I spawned in, ran a bit uh, down the way, had a building collapse right next to me, and apparently I was just too close. Yeah, uh, there was one, th one thing that was really cool about Battlefield 3 that I don't know if they really brought back in Battlefield 4, was that in certain maps there were facades on buildings, and uh, you could fire a grenade launcher or a rocket launcher into the facade and knock off pieces of that and crush people with it. Oh, nice. And there used to be guys who were... They knew all the spots where that would work on certain maps and would just drop stuff on people for the first, like, 20, 30 seconds. And people would call them hackers because they were killing them by shooting a wall above <laughs> them. It's like, you didn't hit me direct, hacker. How come I died? Because yeah, you're an idiot. Standard response to you, I think. Yeah, there's a guy in the PC thread who is really waiting for someone to say, go back to COD, you corner camping sniper bitch, or something like that. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping he gets to hear it someday. Alright, here we go again. I suck with this thing, I know. <laughs> that one could have hit. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that's really interesting on this map over time... Oh, you know what? We're actually out of time for this. Ooh. But uh, I was going to say that radar dish, people never go up there anymore. It's very bizarre. I think people have learned. <laughs> but, as you can see, it was a pretty successful run on our part. I mean, yeah. I did pretty okay for myself, right? Yeah. It was better than I would have ever done. Yeah. I, mean, I, I would have been sticking to the ground game and uh, getting murdered by murder boats, rockets from random puppies, sniped, this, yeah. that, and the other thing. So yeah, it, it's nice being able to actually see the map. Well, thanks for joining me, though. Oh, not a problem at all. It's 
pleasure. Yeah, bye, everyone.